we just said, you know what? We keep telling God, what if we ask God? And we had four coaches in a, in a locker room. We all went to prayer and we all came out of that prayer without talking with almost the same word for what to ha- what we should be doing with this player. And it was amazing that what happened with this player flipped almost immediately. Uh, second question, God, are there any ways that my center broken is getting in the way of this person's potential? And this is a hard one to ask, whether it's comparison, jealousy, critical spirit, conflict avoidance, busyness, um, time and time again, this is the thing. We, we're getting in the way. Um, we have things we need to grow on. We have things we need to reflect. We have blind spots. And that's actually getting in the way of the people that we lead. And finally, God, what have you put inside this person that they do not yet believe about themselves? Um, they're, they're simple questions. But putting these before God over time, there's power in them. Then you move to the right, the acts of fearless humility. God, considering what you're showing me, what act of fearless humility can give you space to help this person become more fully who you were you design them to be. And if you look at the bottom here, I think what you'll see is um, this is not always what you think of when you think of spiritual conversations. There's that in there, obviously a intentional conversation about the good news of Jesus Christ. But some of these things, a word of encouragement, an authentic conversation of life, some even challenging, engaging in critical conversation that I've been avoiding. Um, so often when I think of spiritual influence, I think of talking about Jesus. But really spiritual influence is influence that's led by the spirit. And when I take on prayer in such a way, sometimes God prompts me that I need to increase accountability for somebody. And my unwillingness to do that is actually limiting who they are and what they could be. Um, And just the stories of of how these questions over time have shaped people. uh, It's really fun to have a front row seat uh, to do this. And, and what I find time and time again, um, there's so many stories as people start to take on prayer. Uh, it's very easy and very self-evident what should be done. Um, and I think one of the beautiful things, so many of these actions, they're unseen. They're not on stage. They're just in the normal rhythm of life around the people you're already leading. I'm thinking of a mom recently who had taken on praying on offense. And she reached out and just said, this has changed everything because I feel so much less pressure to lead spiritually my kids when my husband's not home. I see God's doing things and I'm just joining him. And there's way less frustration and way more joy in leading my kids. Well, along with praying for people, there's also praying for the organization. Um, And again, consistent questions that put before God over the course of weeks, months, and years that we may lead cultures that align with his kingdom. Um, again, kingdom alignment, uh, asking God what he desires and what he dreams and what he visions for an entire team, an entire organization or an entire family. This isn't something that can be done in one sitting. It's twice a week over the course of weeks and months and years and spiritual momentum builds. So that's the book. Again, please reach out. I'll send you a free copy. You can look through it. You can change it. You can put pictures in it. Do what you want. The the dream and the goal is that people would pray. And as I said, I I have this dream. Um, Just there's that prayer army. Sun Tzu in in the book, The Art of War, um, he evaluates an army's chances in a war. And here's what he said. It said that one who knows the enemy and knows himself will not be endangered in a hundred engagements. One who does not know the enemy but knows himself will sometimes be victorious, sometimes met with defeat. One who knows neither the enemy nor himself will invariably be defeated in every engagement. And I know we look at culture and we see the enemy encroaching. It's so easy for me to fear what we're up against. But my question is, do we know ourselves? Specifically, do we know the God we serve and the spiritual resources we have access to when we pray? I believe this prayer army, um, it's the best strategy we have right now. The next move of God, I don't think is going to be one Billy Graham type person who is bringing thousands to Christ. I think it's going to be thousands and thousands of spirit empowered believers praying on offense for the people in their sphere of influence. Cause I think this is true. Um, as people start taking hold of this vision for their life, 
they won't want to conform to the patterns of the world any longer. I think people have no idea what they're capable of if they're alive in the kingdom, fully secure in their identity in Christ, and filled and directed by the Holy Spirit. And then neither the hour is more Christians who live and lead that way. So I mentioned these three ways. Again, email me for a copy of this. Um, purchase a book that's personalized with video series. Reach out and ask, what's it look like to be a part of this in a more intentional way where you're walking alongside us or another coach is? I'd love to talk about uh, any of those things. So finally, who's this for? And I think this is really important. Um, it's for all believers. It's such an important theological concept, the priesthood of all believers, moms, dads, pastors, teachers, organizational leaders, factory workers, lawnmower. It doesn't matter. You can start praying on offense for the people around you. And I think that God has so much more he desires to do through people who take on intercessory prayer. And he's just waiting for people to ask him for guidance. Um, I really don't see a limit for what God can do through praying on offense if he empowers the practice in people. Um, and it will lead not only to new conversions of faith, but Christians discovering more fully who they were designed to be and seeing their potential emerged as God's image is more fully cultivated in their lives. Finally, I think this is for saints, not heroes. So often heroes think of being known and remembered, whereas the, the end goal for a saint is to die and be forgotten. Um, and when I, too, when I think of spiritual influence, when I think of spiritual leader, I instinctively think of somebody's ability to communicate, usually from the front of the room. Um, when I think of effective evangelism, the focus is on my words and the language I use. And in both cases, my mind goes to the effectiveness of a person rather than the action of the Holy Spirit. But in this, praying on offense, uh, the importance of what happens for leaders who spend time in unseen places is so clear. Jesus warns all the time about giving and praying in ways that can be seen. He commands followers to give and pray in secret. So your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So whatever role a Christian has in the marketplace, their inability to speak well or have an onstage presence shouldn't limit their effectiveness for Christ because they know it's the Holy Spirit who empowers their efforts. So charisma, charisma is not the main point to have spiritual influence. Position is not the main point to have spiritual influence. Intimacy with God is the main point. And this is the final point. I would challenge you to think. When you think about spiritual influence, are you working for God? Or are you working with God? The, the last person I worked with, uh, she was a human re resource specialist, human relations specialist. And we got done with this six-week program. And she said, she was a Christian. She said, you know, I, I almost felt like it was summer camp uh, where I just was on this spiritual high. But I know it's not that because it was six weeks. But what was so unique is I felt like God was with me this whole time. And for me, that's what the heartbeat of this is. Can we walk to our jobs, to our families, to our churches, knowing God is with us and he's empowering our efforts, knowing our influence not comes from what we say, but from what he says. So thank you. That's what praying on offense is. Uh, I invite you to check out more. Um, thirdlevelleadership.com. Um, email me at jeff at thirdlevelleadership.com. Um, would love to engage with you more uh, in any way that you see fit. So I, I do see there's a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, it looks like Joel's back with us. So um, oh, just a couple amens in the chat, I guess. I, even better. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. My Wi-Fi cut out here at, uh, at the airport. But yeah, I've got a couple of questions that came in through the chat. Uh, one says, so, okay, I'm ready to sign up for third level leadership. What do I do? And how does it work? E well, so email me um, and let's just have a conversation because this is the heartbeat. It's um, to help pray, right? Like, so for some, they're just going to want to see it. And, and that's great. Um, send it to you and you can run with it. Some, they just want to have a conversation. That's all they need. Some, uh, you know, I, here, here's the deal. I think the most effective thing is to have a, someone who can walk alongside you and help you discern and hold you accountable. So I'll tell you a story. I was with a, uh, actually a, a president of a pretty large company um, recently. And he had, he had told me, you know, my, 
I just, um, I feel like the Holy Spirit is prompting me to empower my CFO more. Um, and, you know, when I'm coaching, I'm just trying to write things down. I'm not trying to dissolve anything. Uh, there's this paradigm expert sage. So an expert has all the answers. A sage helps someone hear the Holy Spirit's voice because that's the real expert, right? So I just wrote it down. Um, so the next time we talked, I said, hey, how to go empowering your CFO? And he said, well, I failed. I just, I didn't do it. Um, man, I just, I didn't feel, follow God there. Well, fast forward about 15 minutes in the conversation and he was telling me this story about how he was in a meeting with his, uh, there was like 20 people in the meeting and his CFO had felt prompted to pray. This isn't a Christian company to pray. And he had told him, go ahead and pray. Well, later that day, um, the exact thing they prayed about was answered in the exact specific way. So I paused and I said, hold on. You felt prompted by God to empower your CFO. You said you failed, but then in a meeting with a bunch of people, you asked them to pray, and God specifically answered that prayer. Like, how did you fail? And he ha he just hadn't been able to connect the dots because we're so close to our own lives. We can miss God's activity even when we're it's right in front of us. Um, so I really encourage you know people come alongside, and, and that's obviously something close to my heartbeat. It's, um, you know, looking for a few you know, um, and hopefully we raise up more coaches and people help discern what's happening in everyday leadership because we really think there's a lot of potential here. But that's a that's a picture um, of something that happens time and time again. You listen to somebody after a couple of weeks and you can't even believe how God's prayers have come to life. And often they're really excited about it, but sometimes they can't see it, even though it's so obvious because it's so close to them, they can't even see God's activity. So to answer your question, shoot me an email, jeff at thirdlevelleadership.com. Okay, I see you've got uh, webinars coming up. It looks like a webinar on July 19th. Would you uh, recommend that we sign up for those? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. um, you know, there's some of this, there's there's some other things. So you, you can sign up there. Um, yeah, w sign up for the webinar, ask for the book, what, whatever it takes to, to get people on their knees, um, praying and responding uh we're in okay. got some great comments coming in here zach coffin says incredible bro so encouraged by this every revival has been preceded with everyday people being dedicated to prayer come lord jesus <laughs> zach <laughs> i love it fred hodson jeff clark so thankful god caused our past to cross you are operating in your destiny are you available to travel and share this with men's groups in nashville tennessee and the brentwood uh, franklin areas for the, the, for, the shot, for the shot doctor, maybe, Fred. Shoot, shoot me a tag. <laughs> wow. All right. Got another question coming in here through chat. Jeff, I love watching you and Greg coach. How does the I Am Third work in a day-in and day-out basis as you disciple your basketball players? Well, here's, here's a lot of the heartbeat for this. Um, so much has started in prayer, you know. Um, when we were building our program, you know, we weren't successful early. We were overdriven. We were over competitive. Um, committed every day to start in prayer together. And sometimes it was brutal because my sin was rubbing up against his and his was against me. And we didn't want to talk to each other, but we'd start with prayer. Um, and then we just started to see the way that those prayers were coming to life. Uh, so even, even the way we pray for the organization. So how is our offense designed? We want it to come from the Holy Spirit. Um, does that happen in a moment? No. But over time, we've, as we've intentionally engaged prayer, how do we recruit? It's done in a different way. Um, how do you put God first, other second, yourself third in, in recruiting? Um, how do you pray over recruiting? Uh, I would say every single area of our program, it starts with prayer. Um, there's a lot of times where we're experimenting and we're trying to implement things and we're just trying to pay attention to how God uh, activity is coming to life. Um, and then we, we trust him with the results. And the, the more we've been able to surrender the outcome to him, the more we've seen uh, our deepest desires come to life inside the program. So I, I could for a long time because we've been living that for 15, 16, 17 years now um, in terms of how I am there comes to life. But, I, I can't stress enough, enough how often that has started in prayer. Powerful. 
All right, we've got Cami Molden chiming in here. I'm definitely taking this message to heart and we'll be starting immediately as I pray for those of my influence here at Wesley Seminary. Thanks, Love Jeff. it, Cami. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cami's an unstoppable force as is without, you know, so get that behind her too and watch out. Agreed. So I'm going to ask the, the question that Cami would ask if she were here. All right, Jeff, you're talking to someone who's thinking about seminary. What advice would you give them or how would you coach them if they're thinking about seminary, pastor, lay leader, marketplace multiplier? Well, if, if you take the, the steps of the book, ask God if he wants you to. And if he does, then say yes. Um, I, would, I can't tell you how intimidating it was for me because most classes I went in, um, it was all pastors and me. So I, I just told myself, you know, we have walk-ons in our program. And walk-ons often are the ones who they, uh, they love the game the most. That's why they're there. But when you step into the gym, you often can tell who the walk-on is and who the walk-on isn't. So I saw a, a note from Kevin Bontrager, his son's on our team. When you see him dunk, you know he's not a walk-on. Um, and I went into every class and said, you know, but here's, here's the thing about walk-ons is uh, they go for it because they love it. And I just said, you know, I'm going into this seminary and I'm just going to go for it, even if I'm the walk-on, you know, and I was blown away by the professors. Um, they just embraced me. Uh, sometimes I think they went in the back room and laughed, like, listen to what this <laughs> crazy basketball coach said about whatever, you know, but they were, they were so gracious to me to, uh, push me and challenge me and guide me. Um, and, and someone gave me this piece of advice. They said, if, if you want to know more about God, don't do seminary, but if you want to know God more, maybe, maybe it's the, it's the path to do that. Um, and for me, uh, Wesley seminary deepened my relationship with Christ in such a unique way because of the way I was shepherded through it, uh, each step along the way because of faculty. So my biggest encouragement was if you have any inkling of going to seminary, just jump in and do it. Well, I got to tell you, I've heard nothing but great things said about you and Greg, both from the faculty and the staff. And I can remember when I started at the seminary and I, I learned that you both were in our doctoral program. I'm like how in the world do you guys have time all the time you spend with your families, with recruiting, with coaching, with the game. I mean, it's just what a testimony to the two of you that you are uh, that committed to the program and you're, obviously the fruits that you're bearing are, are just incredible. Cammy, well, love well, really, oh, sorry. I was going to say, really, a lot of the impetus of going was um, we just saw God's movement and we didn't have any categories for it. Um, we didn't even know what was happening. We just felt it. Uh, and so we wanted to deepen a little bit of both our spiritual capacity and relationship with Christ, but also to understand even theologically, what is, what is happening amongst us? Because it, you know, Greg's, Greg's the most amazing leader I've been around, but he, what was happening was beyond the capacity of any person, you know? So um, that was, that was the impetus in many ways behind seminary. Amy says, I love the analogy of you as a walk-on. So perfect. You were the best walk-on we ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes our walk-ons are, they're your, they're your favorites because they don't, they're not the reason you win a national championship, but they make practice fun because they're all in and passionate when they show up at practice every day, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. and I, again, I, some of my assignments, I think you could probably make them like the poster child for what not to write in a seminary assignment, but, uh, I went for it. I know that much. I had some passion <laughs> behind it. There you go. And Cammie's a, a Kansas Jayhawk fan too. So she's uh, riding high from them winning the national championship. She still has the bracket on her door. Just to remind us, <laughs> who won the championship. Hey, uh, Coach Demick says, blessed to have known Coach Jeff since he came to Iowa. The spiritual growth and leadership I've seen in, in him is truly remarkable. Thanks be to God for the ability to have witnessed that up close. Blessings, Trip D. Uh, he's, he's one of my heroes, so to to have that, it's pretty amazing. That's incredible. Got another message here. Our new men's basketball coach at Houghton, Jeff Bialik, speaks highly of you, Jeff. Would love to connect more with you. Ha, I'm so pumped. So, Jeremy, um, way back Jeremy, early in our – Yeah, so, Jeremy, way back early in our – as we were building the program, he was a high school coach here in Indiana. Um, and we'd get on the phone and talk discipleship all the time, and I just love this man. Well, then he – 
he got on a college staff and he started coming to our greater retreat. So we connected even deeper then. And now he's starting his first head coaching job out at Houghton. And I couldn't be more excited because um, you just talk about a man with a heart for God who loved discipleship. Since the moment I met him, his heartbeat was discipleship. So I'm pumped to see how God's going to use him um, at Houghton in this new role. That's really cool. Well, Dr. J, I can't thank you enough for your time again today. And uh, you're on vacation now, taking carving time out of your vacation uh, to, to meet with us and to share this with us. Such a joy. You are one of those people that I just always look forward to being with because I always go away feeling better. And, you know, I know why you, you always ask me, hey, how can I be praying for you? And uh, I just want to thank you for that. It makes a huge difference. Well, and, uh, if you keep telling people I'm a scratch golfer, I'll keep hanging around you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just speaking the truth, man. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Oh, Connie Erpelding, Jeff Clark equals a three-pointer. Love this prayer research and all the opportunities that follow for all of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> so thank you so much. I want to thank everybody for watching today. Sorry for any technical glitches there, difficulties. That was totally my fault on my end. So thank you all for bearing with us. Uh, thank you, Dr. J. Thank you to Wesley Seminary for sponsoring this event. Again, if you're thinking about seminary, 877-673-0009. Ask for Cammie, Shannon, Alex, or Diane. They'd love to chat with you. And uh, again, just thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. And remember, we are Wesley, and you belong here. Thank you so much, Coach. See ya. Blessings.